Next one is from Eddie. Uh, Eddie says, hello, Lars. Thank you for your YouTube videos. You're so very welcome. Uh, they've helped me tremendously. Lately, I've been trying to figure out boundary fill. <laughs> this is a good one. And calculating the volume as it would be a great tool for me designing speakers. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Um, watch some different of your videos. Um, going on, going on, going on. Anyways, wondering if you could touch on the subject. Let's do it right now. So, uh, this was Michael's quadcopter using topology optimization. Don't forget to go and uh, don't forget to go and subscribe to Thomas's channel. Uh, he's super cool. Love what he's doing over his channel. A lot of 3D printing if you're into into that. Now, uh, this one for Eddie. I'm starting a new file here, and let's design a speaker. <laughs> What do I know about speakers? Um, let's go ahead here and S key. It's gonna give me a center rectangle. And I don't know how big speakers uh, you are doing. Eddie, probably bigger than these ones. But anyways, let's go ahead here and, uh, and make some kind of a speaker housing, 400 thick. I'm gonna use this shell command, boom. That will kind of give me the speaker wall. Let's make it 15. And uh, then open up the sketch of the sign here. C for circle. And I'm just going to draw up the base and a treble. Um, now I'm going to use the constraint to make this one and this one vertical. And this one and this one vertical. D for dimension. Let's give it a dimension here. 175 for that one. And 60 for that one. I don't know what is the right numbers. But what you will see here, I think, is going to be a pretty neat trick. There we go. Q for press pull. And that's just cut through there. There is my speaker housing. So what, what Eddie would like to know is the volume. And I don't know too much about sound and stuff like that but i'm assuming that if you're building a speaker housing like this cool one that <laughs> i'm modeling up right now um that you need to know the volume within it right so you can figure out what size speaker holds maybe somebody leave a comment i would love to know more about that eddie or somebody else who knows about this let me know um, now let me show you how boundary fill boundary fill uh that is sitting under here create uh well, how we can use this so we need to close off our speaker housing. And you can do that a couple of different ways. You can actually use planes, but I'm gonna use kind of like well, probably what you want to use. Um, Eddie, what is the surface command? And I am going to hit the patch tool and um, I'm literally just gonna snap a, a lid up uh, here by clicking on the inside edges here and that will give me a pad surface now a pad surface if i select this inside of here right click repeat patch is paper thin wall um like right now this thing is still hollow so if i just do this here and let's do a section analysis um you will see that this thing is still hollow but what we just did was we kind of like closed it off with very thin, non-thick uh, surfaces. Um, so we need to make it enclosed. And the boundary fill is actually also right in here. If we go to create, you will see the boundary fill is also sitting in here. What this will let us do is we are going to select uh, the tools. And the tools is actually all the stuff we just created. So uh, the, the extrude of the housing and then these three lids. When we do that, then we get, we can select the cell over here and we can select one of these twos. Now it gives us two because it could actually create an internal volume and a volume that is the same as the outside here that we did originally. Um, and, and sometimes it's just, you don't really know which one to pick. Um, I'm going to select this one here and see if I get the right one. I'm going to hit OK. And I get an extra body when I do that. Let me just turn these ones off. And you will see that that was the right 
that was the right uh, the right one. What I got is something that filled up that speaker housing, a solid that filled up in that speaker housing. Now, some people's gonna tell me right now, well, dummy, you could just have done a extrusion from this body and filled it up. Yes, but uh, that would not use boundary fill and it's just not that cool. <laughs> it's still the same, I know. Um, but what we're looking for is kind of filling up that space. Now, if I selected the wrong triangle before, I would just have gone down, right clicked on the boundary fill, and I would have unchecked that one and selected that one instead. But I did select the right one first time. Now, what I can do, let me turn off the main body. Now, when I got this filler here, I can right click on it and I can say properties. And there you have it. There's the volume of, of that. Now, if you're working in, um, in, in, in Imperial, in, in, if you're in America, Eddie, then you probably don't want it. Uh, here in metric then just switch your units um, and it will it should switch over so um, speaker box inside volume of your speaker box you get that with the boundary fill Eddie I hope that you found that a uh, little trick useful I love the boundary fill I don't use it enough um, you can do all kinds of cool things uh, with the boundary fill tool if you like this thumbs up if you don't thumbs down and um, give me uh, some uh, Give me some technical details on this whole volume um, and why it's so important when you're making speakers. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it will read the world to me if you would. Thank you so much.